All right, welcome. Got another Rapid Tech course here on our heat exchangers. Guys, I've got good news. We literally, I think this is our ninth or tenth one that we're posting on YouTube, um, but it's also in part of our LMS through the Rapid Tech program. So the great news is, is that uh, we'll continue to give some of this material away um, to help technicians out there. I often get emails and telephone calls. Um, so this information is out there for you to use. You're welcome to use it. Enjoy it. Train your technicians with it. Uh, but I do have to plug my company, and that is if you're interested in the full course. Uh, remember, with Rapid Tech, every single one of these videos is available on the LMS through their mobile device. In addition, all of the other videos and all the other curriculum, including the uh, Rapid Tech Heat Exchanger Certification Program, uh, that will also be out on the LMS. So there are some benefits to joining. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is a Bryant Furnace Model 361, and it was also manufactured by Carrier and Day and Night. I'll show you what I found, though. It's an oil furnace, and um, what I found, and you can't see it, but let's just start up here. See the heat stress there? You know, that's always a concern. Um, one thing that you want to check on these, it's got a round drum. This is where I'm pointing with my cursor. That's a round, rounded drum. It's an aluminized coated heat exchanger, but that is a round drum. The back of that drum, we have seen some failures. So you really want to watch that. Another place you want to check is you want to check right along here, and you want to check right here on these, these corners. And on each cell, so you have one, two, three, four cells on this oil furnace. There's a little blown up picture of the, um, of the heat stress that we found. And then there's a tiny little fracture that you can see. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the video. And then I'm going to go into the possible causes and what may have happened here. We'll go ahead and we always show the tag just to validate what we're viewing or showing you so that there's no issues with uh, um, authenticity. We want to be authentic here and transparent. Um, there we are in our studio. Matter of fact, I was filming all of those furnaces. It looks like we've got a Heil or a Tempstar parked next to it. That's another video that's out there in a Rapid Tech program. But if you look here, and I'll zoom in, and I'll show you where I started to look. And uh, there I looked, and I didn't really see much. And I'm checking that seam. Everything looks good there. Oh, look at here. Let's pause that second. All right, see the fracture? That fracture is working its way out. Now, this is black soot. So um, that furnace may have um, had some combustion issues, and they all will have combustion issues if they're not maintained. So any homeowners watching this understand oil furnaces, they have to be maintained, and maintained does not mean change the oil filter, air filter, and nozzle. That's not maintenance. There's a complete combustion analysis process. There's stack temperature. There's draft settings. Oil's a little different than gas. And here's what I'll tell you. A properly maintained and properly serviced oil furnace will give you great life and good reliability. Um, I'm a fan of oil. We, we use it in our shop. We sell oil furnaces at our company. We service literally hundreds, if not thousands, each year. Let's go ahead and keep looking at this. See that crack? That's not good. Not really much there. You can see a little bit. Right there it is. See it? I should try to pause that. Ah. See it right there? Very difficult to see. Very, very difficult. And there's another. You can see it right there. And then I may try to show, I don't know, I'm getting all goofy here. I was going to try to show that back of the drum. You can see it. It's hard to show. I'll just stop the video because I never did get a good look at it. So what happened with this furnace? I'll tell you what I think happened. Uh, there, there could be a couple of issues. One, we could have a poor design. You know, there may be a design flaw in this. I don't know. I really hate to blame manufacturers. I know there's a, there's, there's a number of... Uh, companies out there, HVAC companies, and they always want to blame one brand over another. You know, I hear it all the time. I hear guys say, oh, that brand is junk. I wouldn't sell that. You know, I'll tell you something. I've been doing this 27 years. 
and you can give me a brand that has the worst reviews online and I'll have one of my installers install it, install it properly, size it properly, maintain it, and I'll put it up against the one that has the best reviews. Here's what I will tell you. Um, it's not always the manufacturer's fault. Oftentimes, it's more the installation that's the problem. We see this all the time. Could there be some poor design here? Absolutely, there could. And that might be just a percentage of it. We might have you know, the issue, let's say we take the total issue, 5% of it might be poor design or 10% might be poor design. Another small percentage might be airflow problems. Okay, remember those high static duct pressures, those air filters that are too small or customers that are letting their filters get dirty and not checking that airflow. Ductwork that's too small. Um, I think I said that already. Airflow problems. Um, Delta T's that are out of range. Oversizing the furnace. And uh, let's go into what I think may be happening here. It could be a combination of poor design, but high stack temperatures. Some of these heat exchangers today, they do not like that high stack temperature. So when you start getting stack temperatures above that you know, 500 mark, and on this furnace, I do not know what it was rated for. I'd have to call the manufacturer, and they may not even have a number. But, you know, that 400, 450 on up, and you start getting into 600, 700 degree stack temperatures, you're burning pretty hot, and that's not good. You have to start checking your air, you know, your air settings, your combustion analysis, your, your nozzle size, um, your, fuel, your fuel pressure, um, the fuel pressure on the, on the pump. You know, you can increase fuel pressure on a pump. Let's say you take a, a 0.75 nozzle. 0.75 uh, gallons per hour nozzle. And um, if you have a fuel pump that's set for 100 PSI and you raise it to 110 or you raise it to 140, you're going to get more BTUs out of that nozzle even though it's a 0.75 nozzle. So, you know, that can be an issue where we have um, some technicians out there that start to manipulate fuel pressure and they start to manipulate nozzle size and they don't go through and double check those delta T's and that static duct pressure and they're not checking the, uh, or they're doing it and they're not doing anything about it, that's a problem. Uh, chimney draft issues can also be an issue in an oil furnace. And then the last thing would be refractory issues inside that combustion chamber. Oil furnaces use a refractory material, what we call a combustion chamber, and that is a material that's designed, it's an insulator is what it is, and uh, some of that refractory breaks down and now you have exposure uh, to that heat exchanger that's not supposed to get that type of exposure, meaning the heat, the heat coming from the fire. So that's what I think is going on, some things that you might want to check there. Um, but again, technicians that are out there uh, working on this type of equipment, keep your eyes peeled, do a good job for your customers. Uh, those of you that are in the Rapid Tech program and the training program, this is just another one that you can uh, place in the tool belt, another video watched, another piece of training, and uh, it definitely will help you when you're out in the field and you run across this. So again, I'm Steve Holland with Rapid Tech, and remember, Rapid Tech is a national certification program. Our core business, though, is not heat exchanger training. Our core business is the technician development program where we help businesses develop technicians. We're not a training company. We don't want to compete with tech schools. Tech schools are our friends. Um, we, don't, we don't teach theory. We don't get into all that. Um, we are strictly a development product or a development program that tech school students, um, individuals that are looking to enter HVAC, manufacturers, um, HVAC companies, for those of you that own an HVAC company or you're a manager, you can use our program to help cut down on that skilled uh, skilled labor shortage that's out there. Our program is proven. We've been using it since 2009, and I will tell you it works, um, and it works, and it's effective. We found that you can train. Um, you can with this the cost to go ahead and get all this this program, the technician development program, comes out to be about 70 percent less than what you'd have to pay to develop a technician. That's after tech school, or um, if you combine tech school, it'd be a higher number. And we find out that it's almost twice as effective. Um, so if you'd like to learn more about how Rapid Tech works, there's a whole program with it. It's not just some videos. These are just part of the curriculum that allows you to get your Rapid Tech certification. So again, enough of that. If you'd like to learn more about heat exchangers, you're always welcome to go to our heatexchangersafety.com website where uh, 
you know, we've got a bunch of information out there. We've got the entire series on how to destroy a furnace. So technicians, when you're working with customers and you need third-party information, pull it up on your smartphone, your tablet. They can read it themselves. I've been doing this a long time. What's different about me is I'm a nut job, all right? I break furnaces down personally myself. I'll go to my shop on a Saturday and I will break down five furnaces, six furnaces, personally, tear them apart, all right? And it's a hobby for me and it's fun. Of course, Rapid Tech is a business, but it started out as a hobby. So I literally have thousands of photographs, thousands of archived uh, material that goes back all the way into the early 2000s, like 2001, 2002, where I started saving this information. Matter of fact, we have a cargo container back at our shop that's full of HVAC equipment ready to be tested. So enough of all that. I'm Steve Holland with Rapid Tech. Thank you and have a fantastic day. And, and until next next time, be safe out there.